Uh, welcome to all the Jaguar enthusiasts. Um, just to let you in, what it is, I'm up in Stockerau, which is just outside Vienna, and uh, I need to, because of problems with uh, uh, Johan's factory, that, well not problems, but they've got so much work that we're not going to be able to work on them until at least April or May, and I need to really get on with my, the, the rear boot on mine, so um, uh, what I'm doing is I've taken this one off this jig, I'll pick the camera up and show you, and I'm putting my one on the jig so they can transport it back down to me. So this is the nice thing about having all the equipment in this overhead, which I'll show you now. So I can just literally pick the car up. The nice thing is this is a 10 ton overhead and it goes from one end of the workshop to the other. So, you know, if you want to move it, uh, I don't know, uh, backwards, so I can move it this way back. Or I can move it closer to me. So this is coming, this, this one up here is, yeah. You can see I can, I'll just move this jig out of the way a little bit. And you can see it coming towards it. That's moving one way. I'll just hold on to the string a little bit. So So there you go. Um, yeah. So uh, let me pick up the pick up the uh, thing. So this is, uh, as I say, because it's uh, uh, April, May. Uh, this is to sandblast up in his factory up in Czechia, because he's got one of these huge machines uh, with doors in it and a, and a kind of um, a kind of railway into it, so they can put big pipe work on it and roll it in. And it's specially made, it must have cost God knows how much money, hundreds of thousands I would imagine, because it's got, the, the sandblaster machine's got louvers in the floors that open up as, and to drop the sand and it even recycles the sand itself. Big, massive machine. Um, and uh, so that's what we were going to do, but now it's getting so late, what I need to do is get on, I've, even though I've done all these repairs to the, the uh, sills and the A post and the B post I've put in, I need to repair this boot. So. As I say, what I'm going to do is put this now tonight on this jig that we made up, and because uh, we've tried them both on, I, I did put it, put this one on first, the road one on first to try it out. So I'm going to put this on, anchor it in tonight, and they'll bring it down to me sometime next week, and I can get on with it. And if worse comes to worse, I, I might even sandblast the car myself 
I'll see how uh, things work out. Um, because I could, in my lower garage, um, I could hire a, uh, a compressor and a, um, a big sandblaster machine with all the gear, with a helmet and a suit and everything, and it might be a way of doing it. The, the only problem would be is getting this jig down into my back, into the lower garage, down the field, because obviously it's got casters on it that dig in the ground. But I've got some spare wheels that I might be able to make some axles on and run it down, possibly. I don't know, we'll see. But I don't want to keep waiting. I mean, it's just going on and on. He's so busy with his, with his company that, uh, you know, if he doesn't get his car done and it takes another six months, well, that's, that's the way it is. But I want to, I'd like to be able to drive this before I get too old. I'm 62 in March and I'd like to be able to get at least 10 years out of it if I can. So, yeah, there you go. And that's the chassis for the white one. And what he's going to do with this, he's found a place in Czechia that will dip it in acid, clean it. Uh, he was going to sandblast it, but I think they're going to dip it in acid, clean it, neutralize it. And then he's found a place that will galvanize it. I'm not seeing a galvanized chassis on an XK150. And I don't know if it would cause problems, I guess, with all some of these bolt holes and things. Um, you know, where, where certain holes, where certain bolts have to go through, I guess you're going to have to re-tap that. But if the chassis is good inside, then fair enough. That one is the old one, and a new one's on its way from the UK as we talk, as, as I'm t talking to you now, with a huge box of spares. So uh, that's another thing I can start making up is the chassis. So yeah, that, that's what we're at tonight. So I'm here on me lonesome, and it's uh, what time is it? So seven o'clock at night. By the time I get back to Vienna, the house in Vienna, pick up our dog and then take him back down to Stratburg and it'll be, oh, I don't know, 10, 11 o'clock, I guess. So, but that's the plan now. So pick this one up. So I'll post this up tonight and you'll see it tomorrow morning, probably, for the XK guys. So, yeah, I just, I just want to get on with it. You know, I, I, I've, it's been four months now since we stripped this white car and we did it in th uh, three and a half days, you know, and we went for it because we were, I thought we were going to sandblast them. And, and four months later, they're still sat here collecting dust, and it's really not not good enough. So anyway, anyway, thanks for watching in. Um, I'm sorry, I'll put a video up tomorrow because tomorrow I'll get the the plug from my local hardware store. So there, there they are, the two XKs. But I'll tell you what, when you've got something like that, that 10 ton overhead crane, I mean, that, that is the dog's nuts, you know, really, it's the do or the dog's bollocks. I'm, I don't know if YouTube will let me away with that expression, but anyway. But you can see it goes right up that end and right down the other end. It's a nice bit of a kit. So what we'll do is we'll build the chassis down in, in, uh, in my place and then bring them up here on the car trailer, on that one, and then uh, join them back up with this, because it's perfect, I mean. You know, where do you get the chance of a 10 ton crane that can move like that? Anyway, take care, catch you tomorrow, and hopefully, I'll have this uh, welder up and running with a bit of luck once I check the instructions. And uh, we'll talk to you then. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching in. Oh, and by the way, the person that keeps putting the thumbs down who never makes a comment, if you're going to put a thumbs down, at least make a comment. You know, say something or. or at least show yourself. Don't be a coward and put a thumbs down and then don't, don't say anything. If you don't like the videos, don't watch them. It's simple. These, pe these videos are made for people who are interested in cars, classic cars, and they seem to like them. And if, if you don't, don't watch them. Simple. Or make a comment and show yourself, you know? I mean, I just don't understand it. The last couple of months, and the guy must be, or the woman, whoever it is, must be subscribed because they keep putting a thumbs down every time on one, every video, just one. So show yourself, have some balls, or if you're a woman, have some backbone, and, 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 and show yourself and, and, and tell me why you don't like them. Anyway, I really couldn't give a toss either way, but anyway, bye for now, take care, and as I said, for the person that's put the thumbs down, let me know. What's, on, what's your problem? What's on your mind? Okay, take care and bye for now, bye.